When John Key launched National's campaign before last year's election, he promised a brighter future for all New Zealanders. In October 2011, he said New Zealand was starting to grow and was bedding in a recovery. A year later, the brighter future is looking a little tarnished, with a swag of statistics showing our economy isn't moving forward. Some suggest, in fact, it's about to go backwards. Prime Minister John Key is with us this morning. Prime Minister, welcome to the programme. Thanks for coming in. I think it was a, in an interview with uh, Audrey Young recently in The Herald where you said you wanted to leave New Zealand in, in, a, in a better shape than what you found, found it. it. Absolutely. Uh, we have a graph and I'd like to continue along that sure. theme a little bit. It's the Reserve Bank growth forecast which I think we can bring up now. What it reveals is that next year, at the end of that graph there, once the Christchurch rebuild has peaked, there is nothing else. In 2013, growth starts to fall away quite dramatically. Post the peak of that rebuild, we're in a bit of trouble, aren't we? Well, I mean, I think the first thing you say if you looked at that graph is um, most other countries around the world would welcome that graph because it actually shows that we're growing despite inheriting the worst conditions probably of any government in two generations. Uh, we have got the country growing. Um, not as fast as we'd like. I think we'd all admit that. But we are a quarter of 1% of global growth. So we are a tiny, tiny fraction. And I can't, even if I wanted to, uh, make the United States go faster or Europe go faster or even solve some of the problems that are there in, in Asia. All I can do is prepare New Zealand to be in the best shape it can be to basically go out and compete on a world stage and to grow by being more competitive, more productive on a world environment. But post-2013, there is no growth. That's according to um, the Reserve Bank. So it's, it's not me saying that, it's them. They're saying that government expenditure have frozen. The 2014-2015, the high Kiwi dollar will remain high. That will encourage imports, underpin manufacturing, and so beyond that, there is nothing else. Yeah, I think you'd be taking that a little bit literally. Uh, so there are a range of views there. The Treasury's views of growth have been a little stronger than the Reserve Bank. Reserve Bank's been a little bit more uh, conservative on that front, uh, although Treasury will go and update its numbers when we get to the half-year update in a few weeks' time. Uh, and there's a range of views in the bank economists. But as a general rule, um, you want to take those things with a grain of salt. There's a lot of different factors. If we start seeing global growth picking up, uh, then that has a big impact for New Zealand. Uh, the domestic stimulus from Christchurch is actually very strong for a long period of time. It doesn't stop in 2013. It in 2013. Um, That's what the Reserve Bank says. Yeah, I'm not so convinced of that. I mean, we all sat around saying it was a $20 billion problem in Christchurch. Well, actually it could be a lot more than that. So there's a lot of stimulus to happen for a long period of time. And then on top of that, but where will that stimulus come from? Minister? Well, in a number of different ways. I mean, for a start off, if the Reserve Bank really believed that there would be no growth beyond 2013 to speak of, then the Reserve Bank would cut interest rates because we still have interest rates at one of the higher levels around the world. So I, I actually don't accept that argument. But what I can tell you is... Um, the pattern that we're seeing this year is actually quite similar to the pattern we've seen over the last couple of years. Globally, everybody gets out of bed in January and says, it's a new year, let's feel a bit more confident. And what ultimately has happened in the second half is we have seen a slowdown. Now, next year, they are talking about the entire growth rate of Europe being 0.1%. They're talking about Germany being under 1%. You look at the United States, I mean, this uh, week we're going off to the East Asian Summit. I'll see President Obama in Cambodia. Uh, and the obvious question for the President is, well, what are you going to do about the fiscal cliff? Because if they get to the end of the year and the bush tax cuts roll off and the spending uh, initiatives that they have roll off, then that means, in theory, the US economy contracts by 4%. So my only basic point here is, is not to say the government should be, uh, we should feel sorry for ourselves, not to say there's nothing we can do. We've actually actually done a lot. My point is simply, in the end, we are a nation that sells to the world. And if the world is slowing down, then we slow down. And you saw that with China, who are very, very okay. Asia, uh, Europe dependent. For all of the goodwill and desire to grow in China, they've been slowing down this year because Europe's slowing down. OK, but what Obama can't uh, really dictate is, for example, the number of uh, young people that we have unemployed here, 15 to 24 year olds. We've got 85,000, not an ed education, <coughs> in, uh, you know, uh, any form of education, training or employment whatsoever. Uh, We've got this graph here from Statistics New Zealand. And there we see under your watch, it has 
increased by 25%, another 18,000 people okay, so if you, are doing again, nothing. Again, if you look at that, I think it's worth putting a bit of perspective around some things. So some of the stats, so this comes off the Household Labour Force Survey is my yes, guess. Right. Okay, so the Household Labour Force Survey measures someone as unemployed if they are looking for a job for one hour or more. So if you rang my household this morning and spoke to my 17 year old son, he would tell you that he's unemployed because he's got three Cambridge exams to go, then he finishes his year 13, he won't start at university until March, and he would argue to you that he's looking for a job. But this isn't just a little phenomenon that well, happens you know, when that, students stop. But let's have a look, let's look at 15 to 19 year olds as a good example. Because the Labour Party came out with some amazing numbers of unemployment. But it's bigger there. than that, though, Prime Minister. It's up to 24 year olds, 15 to 19 year olds. But, we can probably okay, get our head around, but no, 22, but it's just, 23 it's just year olds. 15 to 19 year olds. Four percent of the entire cohort of 15 to 19 year olds don't have a job. All the rest of them are either having a gap year of some sort, or they're in education and employment. Even with 20 to 24 year olds, a great many of them are in some form of work. But you raise the right point, and this is the point about all recessions. The truth of recessions is they are by far the hardest on lower income people and on uh, basically lower skilled people and on young people. And what the government has done to address that is things like the 90 day probationary period, the starting out wage. And if you leave school and you're 16 years of age and you don't even have NCA level one, which we have a third of Maori boys doing that exactly the same thing, leaving without NCA level one, then what reason will an employer have to take you on? And I would say it's goodwill and belief in the individual. So we need to give them other reasons and we're doing that. Um, but what is true about New Zealand, if you want to make that seismic step change, then we have to deliver better educational outcomes to every New Zealand child. And that, that group, and it's for the most part, actually, I do believe okay. you're a world class education, but that, that well, group we'll that don't. We'll talk about education a little later on. Uh, you mentioned about the fiscal cliff and how you know America's edging towards that, and, and, and Europe is a basket case as well. But the Reserve Bank also said in its last statement that the net effect essentially of the government returning the country to surplus in 2014 2015 would be to essentially constrain private consumption. And that is jargon, isn't it? For essentially stifling the economy. Well, we would disagree with that. I mean, the basic point here is we think that over the period from about 2000, 2008, where government expenditure increased enormously, I think by about 50% under the last five years of labour, they actually squeezed the private sector out. And a combination of more regulation, more red tape and bureaucracy, um, coupled with a lot of government expenditure, put a lot of pressure on. So there is one other factor that's worth mentioning, because the government, you're right, is wanting to get to a point where it saves again by that I mean running a surplus. So we ran an $18 billion surplus last year, largely the Christchurch earthquake, but a fair bit there. We're $9 billion this year. By 2014-15 we're on track to be back in surplus. Now some people will argue, well you should just keep spending money. That will see our... But our deficits you're talking about. There are our deficits. So our debt to GDP levels by then will top it just under about 30%. In other words, um, we'll be relatively lowly indebted compared to countries like America and Europe. But I put it to you, we're a small open economy, we have high levels of private sector debt, we, mum and dad have borrowed that debt effectively from foreigners because their local bank has sourced okay. that from foreigners. Does New Zealand want to be in a position where it's highly indebted? We have to pay for the Christchurch earthquake and we have to pay for the recession, we've done but that. There's a wider focus in that though, surely, and you're saying do we want to be indebted? You know, if you look at um, that reserve, the, the Reserve Bank statement again, it's, it continues to say that because you're so uh, wedded to the surplus, essentially it will stifle the well, economy. Let's go back to the very place you started. Um, so, you know, I want to leave New Zealand in better shape than I found it. Personally, I think if I got hit by a bus this afternoon, I will have left New Zealand in better shape than I found it. Uh, because four years on, there are a lot of stats I could point to which show you that this country is in better shape. Everything from a falling uh, crime rate right through to an increase in education levels, whether it's at ECE or whatever. But the point is, and I accept that, I'm not saying things are perfect, but I'm saying when you're the government of the day and when you're the Prime Minister of the day, you deal with the conditions you inherit. They ha they happen to be a global financial crisis, earthquakes in Christchurch, these various other issues. But my point here would be, am I really leaving New Zealand in better shape? If as Prime Minister I say to Bill English, just spend liberally, borrow the money, to hell with the consequences. Well, but as part of leadership being that little bit more dynamic, you seem reluctant, some suggest Prime Minister, stubborn to, to move off your track, that you're on your path you're wedded to the surplus, come hell or high water, even though the agencies say we just have to be tracking towards it, we don't have to be returned to, to, to surplus. Uh 
Well, in the well that's not strictly correct. So at the start of the year, I gave a speech that said, look, I am concerned about what's happening in Europe. Um, and I've been giving that speech for quite a period of time, and that's proven to be correct. And I've given speeches about the concern of the global economy, but particularly in January, I said, look, our aim is to get back to surplus. We won't do that come hell or high water, but we will do it if we can. It's the right thing to do for New Zealand sure. to be back in surplus. But if required, and if we had to stimulate, and if there were other conditions, we would do that. So we're not saying we're completely belligerent about it. But I, I would just say this to you. Go and have a look at what the rating agencies are saying about New Zealand. Go and have a look at what will happen to the United States. Sure. If they continue to borrow deficits of a trillion US dollars a year, they will continue to be downgraded. Now, if we are downgraded in New Zealand, that's not a theoretical they, they exercise say eventually. Happen, they say that's not well, going to happen if we're tracking back. Audrey Young and her piece, and, money, you and the piece with Audrey Young, you said, mm. um, you said, you know, I'm not changing. This is, and this is where we come back to this scenario, whether you're stubborn and you're obstinate and you won't come off no, that no, path. No, no, yeah, what I said in the, was in the context of that is you're not going to change me as a personality. And that's right, you're not going to. Even if I wanted to change, you couldn't change okay, me. I mean, I'm 51 won't. years of age. I have a certain personality and a certain <laughs> sense of humour and a certain sort of relaxed way of doing things. And that's who I am. And if I was to change that, I think the vast bulk of New Zealanders would say, I either don't believe it or I don't like it. Nonetheless, so that might be your personality, but also yeah. politically, you do seem reluctant to change. You do seem reluctant to move off the track when you're on it. That's it. Well, you're because we're there. right. I mean, the simple bottom line is that if we want to protect New Zealand and make New Zealand stronger, we have to build competitiveness. Now, there is no printing money simple solution out there as the Greens and Labour would want. There is no abandonment of mining or agriculture or, or these things as, again, the Greens and Labour want. If we want to grow New Zealand, it's quite simple. We have to go away and say, where does this country have a competitive advantage? Where can we compete against the world? And the answer is production of food, tourism, some high-tech manufacturing areas, these are, and some of the smarts, and the service-based industries which the internet can allow us to achieve. To do that, we have to deliver New Zealand companies an environment and a platform that allows them to invest and grow. And when we do that, New Zealanders will get jobs. And over the last three years, even all of the worst of these conditions, we've still created 65,000 jobs. We well, still have a higher said participation. 26,000 jobs in the 65, last two years. over the last three and years. And you, you promised 170,000. Yeah, over How do you achieve growth when you're year about 150,000 well, jobs over short? A, over a four to five year period. But I mean, my point would be even look at Australia. I mean, when you drill into these stats, you have to go and have a look very closely at them. Um, we have a th there's a thing called a participation rate. How many New Zealanders are actually in full time employment? So again, if you look at New Zealand versus Australia, a lot more New Zealanders are actually in employment. Again, go and have a look at when that unemployment rate was 7.3%. The, un the number of people on un un unemployment benefit was 150,000. Today it's 50,000 and falling. So my only point to you is this. Governments can make work schemes if they want. They can throw some money at things and they can encourage a few people in work. We've done a few of them and I'm, never, I'm not ruling out we'd do them again. But I'm telling you, we have an economy of 2.2 million full-time jobs. Uh, if you want people out there getting more employment, we have to encourage all of those small companies, all of those um, big How companies to, that, to invest. How well, because, because if you go and ask the business community what they're thinking, and you can go and look at things like the mood of the boardroom survey. I'll be frustrated with the, the high New Zealand dollar, they'll be saying life is not good for them. Well, market. actually, quite, quite the opposite. Go and have a look at the most recent mood of the boardroom survey. Go and look at the business growth agenda that Stephen Joyce has been rolling out. The business community would largely say, large and small, we're on the right track in New Zealand. They're not saying life's easy. But you see, if you go and take something like retail, here's a quite an interesting example. In the sort of seven or eight years that Helen Clark was in office, what actually happened in New Zealand was the government spent a lot more money. And the second thing was mum and dad spent money they borrowed on the back of a rising house price. So they spent a dollar fifteen for every dollar they earned. Now they are spending 95 cents. They are saving. So that difference makes a huge difference. So why are they doing that? Not because the government's telling them to. Not because we've dramatically changed things, although a slight change in the GST to savings rate to personal tax rates will help. But because they themselves have worked out the global environment is so vulnerable, they see, like I saw, the same picture as you had on your morning breakfast show the other day of young people throwing rocks at the police in Portugal and they know that the world environment has changed and is likely to change for 10 okay. years. We will talk about that in just a moment Prime Minister. Do stay with us, we're going to pause there, we'll be back uh, with our continued extended interview with the Prime Minister in just a moment.